All right, g'day. Welcome to the Young IPA Podcast, episode 150. And now you're probably thinking, what in the world? That doesn't sound like Pete or Bolt. Mm. And you're right. It's not. Uh, I'm Adam, and, and we're and here with Gideon. Yeah, and in my case, somebody who's not particularly young for the Young IPA Podcast, although I am, young, I am younger than Pete, He's, little known fact. Yeah, Pete, Pete's an old, an old one. But, yeah. And young you're at young heart. at heart, Gideon. Young at heart, You're young correct. at heart. You He's can drink anyone spirit. under the table. Anyway, we're here because uh, Gideon... Gideon. Pete and Bolt are in <laughs> self-isolation. Correct, correct. These are the times we live in. Unfortunately, your favourite hosts are uh, indisposed and in un- an undisclosed location, uh, protecting us all from the spread of the dreaded COVID-19. But in, your, in, a, in their place come your new two favourite hosts, uh, exactly. me and uh, Adam here. And uh, as you can see, we're prepped. We're stockpiling toilet paper. Uh, toilet paper. That's three uh, weeks' Tissues work. and everything else. Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, which we're rationing out among RPA staff uh, because we're a sharing, caring workplace. I might sell it on eBay later. So. Yeah, profiteer. Well, we'll have more to say about that later on. But uh, yeah. yeah, so it's great to be here. And so we're going to call uh, Pete and Bolt later. So you'll hear from them later. But in the meantime, Let's talk about some stories. What's been happening? Yeah, well, we'll start today with airlines because airlines have been in the news a lot because, as we all know, people are travelling less. Qantas has will now will not be flying anywhere overseas and will be mm-hmm. pairing back its domestic travel, even though domestic travel is reasonably safe because it's unlikely you'll catch the COVID uh, from airborne transmission on airplanes. It's really more surfaces you have to worry about. Anyway, yep. so earlier in the week it was reported that the airlines got a 17 17- $715 million bailout. Now, my issue with this is it's not actually a bailout in the purest sense. A bailout to me suggests that a business is doing badly and needs to be rescued by the government mm-hmm. in terms of a rescue package. Like, for example, uh, various investment banks were bailed out by the um, U- US government around the GFC. What they're doing is they're doing a combination of things, but one thing they're doing is actually waiving a lot of fees and charges imposed by government. There is a difference between giving taxpayer cash to an airline or a business and not pay, making them pay Just through the notice or something. Just taking it off them in the first place. Yeah, correct. So I think this should actually go a little bit further. I think governments should, instead of handing out stimulus cash and everything else, should actually give tax holidays. Like, for example, why can't they give uh, temporarily stop charging income tax, for example, or company or permanently, tax? permanently. Well... Preferable, but we'll get to that. That's you, uh, they may say you're a dreamer, but you're not the only one. But uh, and, and especially in hospitality, because hospitals are going to be doing it really, really tough. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, one pet peeve of mine, unsurprisingly, for ideological as well as lifestyle reasons, is liquor licensing. Liquor licensing is way too high, high in this country. Oh yeah. To help the hospitality industry out, why not? Uh, why shouldn't state governments stop temporarily stinging venues? to serve alcohol and for example and, and maybe we should think about a liquor excise holiday as well to look after hard hard done by brewers and distillers and winemakers in in this country i agree i feel particularly strongly about the um people selling alcohol i live in one of the f- few dry zones in oh, victoria well you have still. to vote to get a you have liquor to vote license. if you want a liquor license oh, I, so, I used to live there too yeah no pubs nothing so i'd love to see a little more uh you know whereabouts is that I'm in Camberwell. Camberwell, yeah, because I lived in Burwood for a while. For yeah, yeah, and, yeah, in the same, and, um, in the same And there were like thing. two pubs anywhere near me. One was a place called Prohibition, which was a, a, a quite a good sort of you know hup, upscale type place. And the other one was, was the good old Matthew Flinders, a pokies joint. Yeah, um, but yeah, that, that place is depressing. So yeah, so Sorry, that's another Flinders. removal. Remove the requirement to vote for a damn liquor license. So, anyway, yeah, mate, what do you got for us? Well, a little bit of deja vu here. So. Generation Liberty has once again been banned from campus, this time at Monash Uni here in Victoria uh, with our campus coordinator, Luca Rossi. And so if you've been paying attention, you might have seen um, a couple of weeks ago, we got banned up in QUT and they said uh, our values didn't align with theirs. And this time the uh, student union, they said something similar. They said something around about, you know, we don't agree with all their positions on things, crazy, and they particularly pointed out climate change. Mm. And I think it's important to note, if you actually look at you know, what IPA says about uh, climate change, what Generation Liberty says, they don't really have a stance on climate change. They just, they just say the facts. Yeah, they well, let people make up their own minds. Well, well broadly as an organisation, I mean, we, we tend to look at evidence that goes against the grain of conventional uh, wisdom, especially the apocalyptic doom and gloom, the polar bears are all going to drown, you know, uh, billions of climate refugees, all that hysteria. But what gets me about this story is, and I'm reading from an excellent column by uh, Janet Albrechtson, who also happens to be the chair of the IPA, and she said, she, she notes that the Monash Student Association has said that they don't 
align with values and our, and our being Jen Lee's position on climate change. As you said, there is no position, but even if there was a position, that they are trying to protect people from ideas. They are trying to protect yeah. people from divergent thought. I mean, what kind of a... Uh, it's, a it's a weird place that the left is in uh, because I understand you have to keep people harm from... Uh, say from um, from violence or coercion or robbery or theft or anything else, but the left is increasingly trying to keep people safe from ideas and knowledge. This is how medieval and backwards they are. They they it, it's a form of heresy. Yeah, so, and what I've always said is, you know, if someone if you think someone's opinion is that crazy and that wrong, then why are you so scared of them saying it? Let them say it. Prove them wrong. Yeah. It should be easy. But what I'm surprised about with this story is after that happened with QUT. You know, they copped a, a lot of backlash. You mm. know, their guild said they were receiving phone calls from people, <laughs> you know, harassing them, which thank you everyone right who did call them out. So that was yeah. great. But I'm surprised that uh, the union, because they're, they're pretty cowardly uh, organisations and I'm surprised that they thought they'd... Uh, They'd go the same way as QUT after all the backlash. They'd they get faced. away with it. Well, th this is the problem with student unions, though. I mean, I, I was young once upon a time, and I, uh, you know, was at university and for various reasons was elected to the students council of the student union. And, and, and you were one of them. Well, yeah, I was one of the, I was one of those blokes that uh, oh. had out, you know chased people around with pieces of paper saying come vote and everything else. Yeah. I was one of the, I was I was I was very much one of them in my misspent youth. But the problem is nobody. Uh, the only people who engage with student unions are the trots at university, are, yeah. are really the lefties. Um, and what that creates is these these unions purport to represent all students. They only represent a tiny minority of them. I think only you know, 5% of students tended to vote back in my day anyway, despite yeah. the fact that people like me would chase you around and beg you to, which tells you everything you need to know, But which is fine. But the problem is, as anybody who goes to university knows, is that you have to pay a... What is, what's the SAF these days? 150 uh, bucks up front? I think it's... I think it's way more. I think it's upwards of 300 from what, what I'm paying. Yeah. Uh, mine's on my hex, so I don't have to pay it yet. Oh, lucky you. I like, will pay it. Yeah, so. just add it to the debt bomb that you'll have one day. Yeah. Yeah, don't remind me. No, it's ridiculous. Um, I'd love to get rid of that. So, well, I would have loved to get rid of student unions, but uh, maybe I'll go back and do a master's or something just to... Uh, yeah, come back. And, we'll, we'll start a new party. Go back, and to, <laughs> go back to Melbourne University. Yeah, and we'll take down... We'll take down the unions and the whole student council all by ourselves. Yep, and, and for anybody that's looking at this and is going to jump off Twitter, no, I don't want to forcibly shut these organisations down. I just wish we didn't have to pay for them in the, in the form of the ser student services and amenities fee. So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, interesting times we live in. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're going to call our old friends Pete and Bolt now. All righty, we now have... Pete and Bolt on the phone. They're currently in self-isolation. How are you guys? Really good, uh, mate. Thanks for having us on the show. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, what's up, guys? Rosner yeah. here. So, okay, let's let's hear why you're in uh, quarantine or self-isolation. Uh, Bolt, you go first. I'll go first. Uh, so, my little brother studies in uh, the US and he beat the ban on the US travel by about three hours. Jeez. And then uh, went and had dinner with him. It's like, you know, a family thing. And then the nice travel ban came in. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I pointed that out to my manager here at the IPA. I was like, you know, just letting you know, full disclosure, I had dinner with uh, my mate, uh, my brother who just got off a 15 hour flight. And I was told, uh, yeah, you might want to work from home this week. So here I am. Well, he, he's a very good man and he's very prudent, so uh, very good call. Do you have any symptoms? Does your brother have any symptoms? Uh, do you have enough toilet paper, Bolt? Toilet paper's good. We actually... Because we got uh, some here, baby. Have, yeah, you can borrow here. it. Oh, we, okay, well, I might talk to you in a few weeks or so, but for the moment, we're all right. Uh, no symptoms at all. Uh, it's just a matter of not going full Jack Torrance and <laughs> killing all my housemates because I haven't been able to go outside for a while. And... Is your brother getting tested or are you getting tested? Uh, I don't know. Communication has flatlined. He's still jet lagged. It's mainly based on NFL free agency. <laughs> All right. And Pete, mate, what, uh, what's the go with you? Well, I uh, displayed the symptoms of a very light fever, very light oh. fever on Friday at work. Where are you uh, what's that, mate? Where are you hung over? Follow up <laughs> question. Well, this has been a topic of a lot of discussion amongst my friends. I actually displayed the light symptoms, the light fever prior to beginning to have a few beers on Friday night. And those symptoms did persist on Saturday. Uh, so unfortunately, 
I wasn't able to attend my cricket club's grand final on that day. Oh, but uh, that was I'll very considerate of you. you well, they lost anyway. So. Oh, right, okay. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was a joke, guys. Uh, so, um, so the powers that be have sort of sent me home uh, from work. What was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, look, there has, as I said, there has been some speculation over whether having a few beers on Friday night contributed to my <laughs> symptoms. But believe it or not, fellas, I am. Uh, what's the word? I am familiar with the symptoms of a hangover. So uh, it wasn't that. Oh, it was sorry. a very long time. And, uh, and uh, yeah, here I am. Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, if, if, if the hangover symptoms are like this COVID thing, then uh, no Australian will ever go to work ever again on a Monday uh, or possibly even longer. So that, it's a good thing they're distinct. So there's no confusion over what people are experiencing. <laughs> I don't That's know. right. About seven people uh, tagged me in that Batuta Advocate article uh, making that exact point. So thanks. <laughs> because you know what, Pete? I remember having beers with you on Friday afternoon and I remember Bolt yeah. being there and a few others being there and none of the others of us have gotten any symptoms. So <clears> I don't know if I believe you. We, we practice social distancing, I think. I'm this place. calling you out. I don't know if you've got anything. Well, I was saying that I, I certainly have nothing now. Like I'm in full health now, uh, so so you're correct from that point of view. But I remember, if you recall, Adam, uh, during that <laughs> outing that we had, uh, I was saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm fevery. I've got it. I've, I've got definitely got coronavirus." So, um, so yeah, I don't know why you guys haven't caught it. Maybe because, as Gideon said, we're practicing social dis- distancing. But I, I think, yeah, yeah, I think in my case, it's because I lead such a healthy and balanced lifestyle. My immune system is in absolutely tip-top shape. So, uh, yeah. And, or, or a bolt, the theory is, uh, I'm going to jump the gun, your theory is that maybe, you know, they use alcohol to sterilise hospitals, so maybe I'm a one-man quarantine zone or safe zone. I don't know. So if you get well, my other theory about you is that mm. uh, you, like, this is a very Melbourne Central point I'm about to make, but yeah. Gideon is a fan of a place called Spleen Bar, <laughs> and I'm sure their own spleen bar but i feel if you've been to spleen bar enough you develop an immunity to literally every single <laughs> disease that's not existing now but will exist in future no no sorry no no, no, no. the healthiest man no 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 like the, 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 the spleen uh, is under new management now yuxel does a very good job a very hygienic venue and open during the covered uh, crisis for the community of drunks that it uh, oversees so everybody get down to the spleen on 41 <laughs> burke street uh have a jam donut, uh sp- take a day to joel and tell them rosna sent you that is the opposite oh. of what everyone's telling everyone to do. But listen to Gideon's advice and a, uh, go and stimulus, have a beer. Stimulus. Yeah. Look at look after the hospitals. There. Yeah. No. No. Don't don't go out clubbing tonight. I don't. Don't think go out clubbing, but go go to the anyway. But I don't want to give. Uh, yeah. Listen to the experts. Listen to the chief medical officer. Listen to Norman Swan yeah. uh, if you mu- if you really must. But uh, yeah, you pro- I'm probably I'm probably not the best person to ask about anything related to public health, uh, given my yeah. utter disdain for it for 32 years. So this is a big adjustment <laughs> for me. I have to, you know. Uh, use hand sanitizer and everything. Oh, else. Yeah. Anyway, so what what are you guys doing to? Oh, pass- that's sorry, one. sorry, that's another one for me. You know how they're telling us to wash our hands for thirty seconds. Yeah, that is so long. I thought I it was know. twenty actually. So I've been doing it for well, not even twenty, but I was told twenty. Oh, yeah, if that's well, the I case, I'm I'm done. To the bright side chorus and. That that is a long chorus to be washing your hands for. Well, yeah, I, I the, when this came in to test it out, let's hear what they say you should do. I sang happy birthday to myself twice yeah, in the IPA bathroom, feeling like an absolute uh, idiot, and thinking, great, great. I hope that you know somebody walk, walks in right now and sees me there. Well, happy birthday to you. Just so you know, guys, <laughs> you're allowed to I'm sing so... it in your head. There's no rule about no, no. singing it out loud. You just don't care. No, 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 this is a global song. pandemic. <laughs> yeah, we all have a responsibility to sing out loud here. Yeah, there you go. Sing out. I've been doing it in my head, and it's. I haven't been. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been doing it at all. I've, I'm doing the same hand washing. Just a quick, you know, put your hand under the water. That's all you need. Jesus, no, it yeah. isn't. You need soap. Yeah, Your you hands. definitely need soap, Adam. <laughs> Christ Almighty. Ben, let's not get into the nitty gritty of it, but I'm gonna erect on the situation. I'm gonna erect a small barrier here, a, a Trump style wall. No, no, I'm very. Beach. I'm gonna learn a lot about hygiene in the next few months. <laughs> well, that's a world first for you, Bolt, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, no. So what are you doing to pass the time, lads? What's been keeping you busy? I'm actually fascinated to hear Pete's answer, so I want to <laughs> go first. <laughs> go, Pete. <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, James, but it's actually not that interesting. Oh, no, it is pretty interesting, actually. So I've been working on the next script of what I wasn't told oh. about Top Secret because, as you would have seen, what I wasn't told about Donald Trump and what I wasn't told about climate change 
have seen three quarters of a million views, I think, something in that vicinity. So that's what yeah. I've been doing, working on that script. And of course, as regular listeners will know, working on the old PhD, coronavirus, <laughs> bad for the world, good for Peter's PhD. Are you still working on uh, that thing? I thought you submitted it. No, no, it's, I'm not trying to make a joke. I, I honestly thought that it was uh, it being submitted. I had submitted it to my supervisors, who shall remain nameless, oh, right. and then held on for it. Held on to it for seven months. But anyway, they got back to me now. And so a couple more things to knock off, and then I'm pretty confident that, you know, the longer this pandemic lasts, the sooner I'll be able to get that, that thesis in. So Fantastic. Uh, that's what I've been doing. Going shopping, that was been fun. Watched the footy last night. No, what about no. you, James? Uh, well, so he, working from home, still trying to make sure I'm out there working for the IPA, defending freedom, et cetera. Uh, so it has been trying to like maintain as much normality as possible. So here's my life tip for working at home. Always get dressed as if you're going to work. Like I've been uh, suiting up in my living room, which is a weird look, I will admit, but it yep. stops you just playing video games and getting Uber Eats all day. You don't so, even suit up to come uh, and work at this place in the best of times. <laughs> be that as it may, <laughs> it does help in the home environment. Just wearing like business shirts, wearing your good chinos, like getting out of your sweatpants. Trying to go for like two hour walks every day. Oh, um, here. A light. It's, you know, just trying to make sure I keep the brain occupied. Don't two hour like, walks. Watch t- two hour just walks. Just for a run, like, mate. Yeah, that's a really long walk. That's longer than you would if walk. you're at work. Well, they, they've closed yeah, the gyms. I'll, I'll have to start bloody going running age. like every other idiot. Um, I can't run. My knees are just uh, kind of crappy. And <laughs> like two hour walks are a good way to catch up on all the podcasts, which is good. Wearing, that is true. wearing chinos in your house is really, real serial killer behavior, Bob. <laughs> Well, uh, well, I hate to break it to you guys, but no, it's just like, you know, just keep uh, the mind occupied, keep business happening, you know, keep on top of things. You're right in a sense because, I mean, for those of us who are here or who aren't in quarantine, we've been working sort of half at home. We've been staggering office staff to try to prevent spread and everything else. So I've been working from home 50% of the time and and you're all right. There is... You know, I, I, it, it's working from home sounds nice, but it can get really, really monotonous and very demoralising. Oh, especially like if you're it. like me, and I do not uh, bother to get dressed. I just wear my jammies all day long. Um, and the days <laughs> I come in when I actually shower and shave and uh, you know look in some <laughs> remote way like a human being, I do feel a little bit better. But to me, the, you know, a few weeks or indeed months of working in my jammies, I just can't pass that up. In well, fact, I've ordered, I've, well, I was on Peter Alexander website last night and I ordered a new, a new set, so. Lovely. Well, I've done the opposite. To stimulate the economy. I, Are you um, paid for all these promos? What? You better be getting paid for all these promos. We've had the spleen yeah. shout out, we've had a Peter Alexander shout the, out. The, the spleen pays me in, uh, in camaraderie and, uh, and good, <laughs> good vibes, so. Uh, but yeah, Peter Alexander, uh, do a sponsorship deal. I'll go on the next. Um, They're expensive, so that's a good sponsorship I'll, I'll deal. Go, I'll go on Sky and uh, my shorts and uh, tea from mm. Peter Alexander, yeah. Well, I've done the opposite. There was a bit of a mix up today. I didn't really realise I was coming into the office. I thought we were going to a different studio, so I've worn my thongs into the office. Um, oh. Where did you think we were going? Woodstock? Well, I thought we were just going to be, <laughs> you know. It was going to be like in Brunswick or somewhere, kind of trendy. I thought we were just going to go there for a couple of hours, record the, record the podcast, and then I was going to go home. Mm. So I thought I'd just come in with my thong. So I think I was actually more dressed up yesterday working from home when I had, I yeah. think I had shoes on. So I've done the opposite. Adam is a rock star, so he can wear whatever he yeah, wants. Yeah. I'm surprised he's all the See, I'm, all. I'm not usually one of the, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that'll go barefoot on stage. I'm not really for them. I don't like it, but I think I might be now. Thongs are really. I was gonna say, if we did end up recording because we're in a studio in Brunswick, were you gonna like bring your guitar with you just to let the people know, just in case anyone's walking around wanting a guitarist for the band, you can be like, oh, I yeah, already have it. You know, maybe get some free recording time and be, you know, yeah, two you birds, go. one stone kind I'd, of deal. I'd, I'd like to see that because you, you rock up because I don't know if you guys can see Adam, but he's in a tie dye t shirt right now and thongs. Oh, that, so right. imagine, imagine you know him sort of marching into some sort of hipster bar and with his guitar and everything else and. Uh, than uh, saying, and now, have you, have you heard about the th- truth about climate change and Donald Trump? Yeah, I try and look <laughs> as opposite as possible to what I actually think. <laughs> you, find, it, you end up annoying everyone from every side of politics. That's the way I go yeah. about it. Yeah. The deep Melbourne indie lifestyle. Yeah, deep Melbourne indie lifestyle, yeah. but not necessarily politically. So there you go. As I saw my Twitter bar, I'm an inner city righty. Hey, um, guys, uh, what, what, what are you watching, what, reading, listening to? Anything particularly interesting to pass the time in, in quarantine? 
Bolt, you first. Uh, well, it's been mainly Sky News all day because, yeah, like, yeah. you know, it does, it does bum you out, but this is, you know, and it, it sucks, and I hate coronavirus because it took all my sport, mm. and it's hurting people all around the world and stuff like that. But this is a really interesting time, and it's just, like, so surreal to watch, you know, one press conference, uh, U.S. has closed its borders, and then two hours later, <laughs> Canada's done the same thing. It's just like, what age are we living in right now? So it's been a lot of that, and then, you know, once workday's done, I'm so back in on The Walking Dead. It's so good. Really? I know. I've seen that one. I've yeah, I never got into that so, one. Get back into it. So good. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, yeah, so I'm a Sky fanatic at the best of times. Uh, and the Mitre downstairs from this place, for listeners who are outside Victoria, that's Melbourne's oldest pub, a real institution. Another plug I've managed to give on this uh, short segment. But I walked in there the other day for a beer in the middle of the day and Sky News was on and up turned up to full volume. I thought, when does this ever happen? Sky being on at the pub. I thought, this is fantastic. So I just sort of worked out of there for the afternoon. I had my phone, sent a few emails and everything else. Yeah, so We don't times. have Sky at home and I am jealous. Oh, well. That's uh, something for the Schlick family to invest in it. It's the People's News Network. It's yeah, the only, exactly. only news you can trust in times like this. Yeah. And the Australian and a handful of other outlets. How about you, Pete? Mate, I've been reading. So Theodora Pantelich, who is, uh, works with Jen Libet, the IPA, lent me a book about three months ago called A Dog's Heart. And it's about 120 pages long. And <laughs> I'm now halfway through it. And I'm absolutely just on rushing towards the completion of that book. So Theodora... We'll be very happy to hear that. I can't remember who it's by, but it's a famous book. What, what's uh, it about? And, I've never heard of it. Oh, okay. Well, it's about, so there's this doctor in Russia and in like just after the Bolsheviks took over and he, he uh, what's the word, adopts a dog and then he starts giving the dogs human parts and then the dog, I think, turns into a Bolshevik uh, and it's this you know satire of the Bolshevik revolution, but I haven't got to that bit yet, so no spoilers. Uh, obviously, what I really want to do is read all the Gen Lib books uh, for the Gen Lib book oh, cup. Good plug, good plug. <laughs> yeah. So, Thanks for that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, iPad.org.au forward slash join for those interested. Yeah, so I, so I was going to nab a coffee before I left the office, but then I got cast out for being a leper. So I don't know how I'm going to get my hands on any of those books. But for those that you that can, do it. Here, yeah, yeah. Um, So if there's about five odd minutes left in this segment. I just realised we haven't actually talked about anything to do with politics or public policy. So, jeez, that'd be um, weird. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah what people me and pay for. giving the people what yeah. they want. Um, so, just James, what do you what, what do you starting with James again? What, what do you make of the government's response? What do you make of everything that's going on? Are we overreacting? Are we underreacting? Oh, I don't think we're overreacting. I mean, like. You know, the thing's jumping up by 25,000 every day now. Like, uh, scary times out there. But, you know, like, uh, read the stuff that we've been putting on ipa.org.au. The, if, if you want to hand out stimuluses, that's one thing. But, like, you also got to reduce red tape. You've got to uh, make sure, like, you know, the payroll taxes and all that mm. sort of stuff can get heard because the reason people are, aren't getting, are getting, like, go right now as opposed to, like, a few weeks from now is not because, like, people immediately stop buying i mean it's like because companies can't afford to keep them on and mm. the other thing that i'm noticing is like there are so many businesses that are failing it's really sad but there's like other businesses like uh what is it coles are now trying to hire 10 no woolies are trying to no sorry it was coles are trying to hire like <laughs> fire attendants yeah it's like uh how many people like how can we make sure through you know all these employment laws and all these like occupational mm, licensing correct. laws the people that are getting let go from service industry jobs can immediately try and get jobs in businesses that are doing, even if it is temporary, uh, are doing well just to make sure that people can keep putting food on the table. So I just think like, you know, stimulus packages are one thing, but just making sure people can get out of the house and can go to a job, that's another thing. So yeah. I don't know exactly what it was. They are Gideon, you're the director of uh, policy. You'd be better at that than I am. Uh, <laughs> on that's a good day. got to be like it's what we're trying to do here. Because mm. you've got like the whole service in. If this does last like three or four months, and people are finding it really hard to get a job, I've got to talk to whoever keeps slamming a door here. Uh, but if we are like, uh, you know, if people are struggling to get a job for three or four months, we talk about the dignity of work here at the IPA. Yeah. It's like work yeah. good for bringing in money, but work's also good for like, you know, uh, as I said before, not turning the next couple of months into. Uh, video games all day it gives people a sense mm. of meaning and purpose well it's actually a serious point i mean i'm miserable after being at home and having work to do for you know two or three days uh, it, it actually is a human problem that 
There are people who are permanently locked out of the workforce for whatever reason. But uh, for more of that, check out the IPA's excellent Dignity of Work program. Yet another plug. Yeah, good one. How are you, Pete? Any uh, any uh, final remarks on the situation? Well, look, yeah, I mean, it's good that I get the final word on coronavirus uh, globally. But no, I think, look, the lefties never miss an opportunity to use a crisis to their advantage. And yep. you can see mm-hmm. it sort of starting to pop up. You know, this is proof that free market doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. Let's not forget this whole problem was caused by a communist country. Right. It was caused by a communist country behaving like communists, lying about what was happening, telling doctors who were talking about uh, this virus that uh, they should be quiet if they were punishing those doctors. So that's why this happened. It happened because of communism. So let's not forget that. And the solutions to it, as James sort of alluded to, is free markets. We talked about deregulation. We've talked about, uh, we haven't talked about, but the, the supermarkets are now opening their uh, opening hours for 24 hours. They're being allowed to do that. So we can see that that's, uh, that's the kind of solution to this problem. So when you're talking with all your mates and, you know, Aunt Jenny says, <laughs> you know, we've got, we need more authoritarian government, uh, tell Aunt Jenny she's wrong. But yeah. uh, wait, Pete, uh, you had a really good point about uh, the trucking laws that I think you want to make on the show. I had a good point. That's good to know. I actually made that last week, James. You should pay attention. But uh, James, <laughs> right. the, the, um, the uh, trucking thing was that they, uh, as, as listeners would know, that um, the retail people said the trucks weren't allowed to deliver during the night because there's regulations around that. And if they were allowed to deliver during the night, uh, then stuff like toilet paper shortages wouldn't be happening because they'd be able to restock the shelves quicker. So once again, another really good example of uh, regulation, which is sort of exists for no reason, uh, stopping us recovering from crisis like that. So don't miss opportunities to talk about that yeah. because the left won't. On that, I mean, I'm astonished by the number of people, and again, this is a symptom of the fact that I live on Twitter uh, and it does my head in, but there are people who are saying that the panic buying we are seeing is just a symptom of capitalism, that you know, unrestrained capitalism. They are seriously suggesting now that we would all be better off if there was a centralised government rationing out in good times as well as bad Basics like toilet paper. In case you hadn't noticed, that isn't working particularly well yep. in places like Venezuela. So that's been so, tried yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, it, uh, I don't yeah can I one more point? Sorry, Bob, go on, on mate. This. Yeah, one more point on this. Like, people going like, oh, look, the supermarkets are cleaned out. This is predatory capitalism. They're getting restocked every day mm. in a global mm-hmm. pandemic with, like, pressure the world has never seen on supermarket chains, and yet they're still getting reloaded every day. Like, there's still stuff to go around. Yeah. You think about, like... Listen, like bread lines were just a thing that happened because they didn't have bread. We can have everyone in the world descending on coals and coal still has stuff. Yeah, it, 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 it's actually an evidence of the free market working well. The, the, I'm amazed. I go, to, I go to the coals near me in Spencer Street and everything's been completely stripped bare in the afternoons. I went down yesterday a little bit earlier to try to be organised. Everything was more or less restocked it's 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 almost magic so yeah yeah, they're doing a good job the free market is almost magic that's the quote of the day anyway guys uh we do have to leave it there but thank you so much for joining us and uh i hope you're grateful to both of us for giving you something a bit different (laughs) to do in quarantine and brightening your day as no doubt uh you thought we would this is the high point of my day (laughs) shout out to all out there absolutely we'll be back uh follow me on twitter at james m bolt if you want to get in touch yeah, no, no, you won't be back. I like this job. I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, I think, I think there's a change yeah, I'm in getting leadership nice and here. Cozy. Yeah, correct. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, boys. See ya. Alrighty, we're back and we're at that part of the show where we talk about our heroes for the week. So, all do you want to run the, uh, the tape? The, the piggy. Grunt the pig, hero for the week, freedom of award, freedom award. I messed that up. Anyway. My hero. Yes. So my run was pretty cool. A bit hit a bit of a soft spot for me. There's yeah. this cool organization called Reporters Without Borders. Mm. And they have started a Minecraft server. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's played Minecraft back in the day, or maybe now. I may sometimes still <laughs> dabble in it. And what they're doing is they're putting up all this censored uh, material that's been censored from different countries. Yeah. Uh, from reporters and putting it on Minecraft in a library where anyone can view it in any country. So they're building like this colossal library, and it's it's the most amazing thing. It's this pl- uh, uh, 
I'm not, I don't play Minecraft. I actually, to prepare for this segment, I'm showing my age again, but I actually had to spend a good 15 minutes working out what the hell Minecraft oh, was. No. And how you play it. I watch YouTube tutorials on how it works <laughs> and everything else. If you like, I can download it for you later and you can play it. Hell, give me something to do during quarantine when I'm not uh, working very, very hard, of course. But... Um, yeah, so they built this palatial library and to circumvent, you know, state censors where they might ban books yeah, and so on. Yeah, because no countries, you know, ever suspect Minecraft of, you know, <laughs> trying to get through all this censored material, what, but they are. Won't they just ban Minecraft now? They could, and that's what some people have pointed out. But, you know, I guess that's how these things work is... You just have to find a new one. You just got to keep finding a new way. So what are they going to do next? They're going to, you know, have... Uh, codes buried in Call of Duty or something. Yeah, maybe Sims. Go, they might Sims. Come, come up on Sims. <laughs> so instead of sort of going down to the sh- again, it's been years and years since I played the Sims, but instead of going down to the shops to buy, you know, you, you to party and meet friends and everything else to go to the next level, you just go to the, Sims. the library to ban to read the banned books. And look, I love this course. I think it's awesome. But some of me doesn't quite believe me. Some believe it. Some of me just thinks it's someone's excuse to play Minecraft as a grown well, man. But I'm here to say you don't need an excuse. You're allowed to play it as much as you like. Well, it's an awesome game. But hang on, yeah, you're right though, because in the, according to the story, it, it was built by an organisation called Blockworks, with a team of 24 people from 16 different countries and about 250 hours. So are these people paid to do this? This is their job. This is I hope capitalism. so because if they if they are, I know where I'm going. It's I'm a future going career option. That's the best job ever. I reckon I've played. You know, throughout my childhood, I've played more hours than that, and I got paid for none of them. Yeah, so yeah correct. I'm, I probably lost money. So there you go. Right. That's my hero of the week. So I've got this bloke who named Fang Fang. Um, not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly, but he's written a blog post which has been very, very critical and rightly so of the um, of the Communist Party of China's response to this uh, this virus. And before all that, I mean, by way of background, you know, we should be really, really angry about what the Communist Party of China has done with this. They have suppressed uh, information. They have jailed the doctor who discovered it. They've, or they reprimanded the doctor who discovered it. They jailed the journalist who reported on it. And apparently they, they, ha- they ordered all samples of this virus to be destroyed uh, back in December when it first broke. Without, yeah. And if they hadn't done that, we might not be in the situation we're in now. So against that background, the Chinese Communist Party has asked that people be grateful to the CCP and to Xi Jinping for fighting the virus. Uh, and this bloke has actually written, uh, I'm pretty sure it'd have to be anonymous, otherwise I'll throw him in jail, that <laughs> you know, great, we should be grateful for China, grateful that, we, that they reprimanded the doctor and jailed the journalist, grateful that they've walled people up inside their own homes, grateful. I mean, there's footage floating around the internet of sick people being bundled by goons in hazmat suits into vans and driven away. I mean, those are not people being taken to a hospital. I can tell you that for free. They're struggling with all their might. Yeah. So, yeah, good on the, the whistleblowers within China. And if there is a, 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 a plus to this whole situation is that we may be able to slay the dragon for good. I think the emperor's clothes have fallen off, but who knows? What's, um, I think, weird for me about this one is I don't think the Communist Party really understand what gratitude is because <laughs> last time I checked, you're not allowed to ask for it. You know, you've kind of, there's got to be some sense of you earning it. And yeah. I certainly don't think they've done it this time around. No, correct. But this is the, the age we live in. So, well, good on him. All right, let's swap to the other side and talk about villains. Saul, you want to run the tape? More than 300 arrests have been made across Australia as Extinction Rebellion protests enter their sixth day. The- so that is a tape of Extinction Rebellion protesters a little while ago doing a nudie run. Yeah. Uh, as you'll see, none of them are in the nudes. As you see, fake nudie if you, run. If, you, if you're watching us. Yeah, fake nudie run. They were yeah. all in their underwear. So we're dedicating this villain se- segment to them because Correct. They, they suck. Yeah, well, they, they suck at the best of times, but they can't even do, their, do a protest properly. They can't even do a nudie run in the nude. That said, I think, you know, speaking of gratitude, we should be grateful to them for not stripping down and subjecting us all to that. Because, yeah, granted, I didn't want to see it well, at all. But Well, my morning commute is bad as it is. Do I really want to see a bunch of unwashed sort of trots marching up Burke Street? Delaying in their the trains suits? and they're in the nude. Yeah, correct. The worst of both worlds. Anyway, well, my I'm going to get the photo up here on my phone. My villain of the week is, unsurprisingly, the uh, socialist alternative at uh, Melbourne Uni. So I was at uh, uni the other day, just walking around, and I saw this poster, and for those listening, it reads, Capitalism and Coronavirus, Symptoms of a Sick System. Clever. Now, there's a lot of things wrong with this idea. (laughs) Uh, 
And we've touched on a lot of them throughout the show. The main one being coronavirus didn't start in a capitalist country. <laughs> I think you'll find that uh, communism had a pretty big hand in it, mm. um, which is pretty ridiculous. And I was walking around and later that day I saw another poster that said, uh, in the, it was a, about the same event, about this coronavirus thing, saying cap- capitalism is killing us. I think you'll find communism has probably done a better job of that. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, capitalism didn't kill you know, 500 million odd people through the course of its existence. But uh, yeah, well, you know, the trots are going to do what they do and uh, nothing's changed since my day at that place. Yeah, and they're, the socialist alternative are pretty crazy. But this time I thought, wow, you've really outdone yourself. They asked me to sign something later yeah. that day as I was walking past them. I yeah. said no. I was tempted to put my friend's email down. No, you do always do that. You always give them a fake name because that, that's what I used to do. So when I was at uni and they had the petitions, after a while they started recognising me because I was um, you know, a right-wing ratbag and uh, paid them out all the time. But in the early days I'd, I'd sign it as you know Al Gore or something when they're trying to sign me up to some climate tr- petition. You know, that happened a while ago last year. There was that big climate one. Yeah. Can't remember who did it, and you know, Albus Dumbledore came up on it. And, oh, that was know, that, that, that was for like, like a, a roll call of scientists. It's yeah, like that Donald one. Duncan yeah. Stuff. No, but when you, if you sign their petition under a fake name, it's this beautiful, beautiful thing because you sign it, you act really interested. You say, "Oh, yes, very concerned. Where do I sign?" And then you just wait ten seconds after you walk away, and they realise what you've written, and they yell and scream and bang their fists. So uh, yeah, no, it's the great, only problem great is control. I found out if you if you get on their bad side, they never leave uni they are there every single day they never like they're so persistent yeah. it's crazy they will not leave you alone you never get to go to the library in peace ever again well they so, stay there for their entire lives i mean a lot of the people you know they're probably the, the who are around probably in my there day. when you were there yeah, yeah. And, they, and those people in turn were there i have friends who are a little bit older who i've made friends with people who are graduating when i arrived and they said that they remember their first year these characters hanging around so they, they just do not leave university they never leave so if you get on their bad side You've got a long degree ahead of you. Correct. So, but you're doing a you're doing a public service. You are doing public service. Right. So, I've got my villain, and this is so we are in a time when public health is admittedly mm-hmm. important. I've always been a public health skeptic in the sense of uh, what I'm about to talk about, but. The biggest threat to public health is obviously and clearly COVID-19. Whatever you think yeah. of, whether it's going to kill millions of people or whether it's a bad strain of the flu, there there is a broadly accepted understanding for obvious reasons. That is the public health crisis facing us. But right on cue, the same villains from big public health have come out and found another way to cheapen the brand of public health. The city of, of Melbourne... Course. The city of Melbourne has already banned... Uh, they have already banned smoking in the Burke Street Mall. Okay, look, I am not so enamoured with that. I don't quite think that... I, I know that passive smoking is not good for you, but I think in an open area, a whiff of it will not you know, send you to a hospital ward. But I understand that there is alarmism around that. They are now banning vaping in that very same place. Vaping. So... For for one thing, as far as I'm aware, there is no suggestion anywhere ever that there is such a thing as secondhand vaping. So it is mm-hmm. n- has absolutely no impact on public health. Um, but secondly, they are banning a technology that is helping literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world get off conventional cigarettes. Yeah. And I guess for me, I mean, look, the smoking thing, as you said, don't love it, but like I get, it smells pretty bad. You walk past someone smoking, it doesn't smell great. Vaping... Like, it smells like mangoes and, like, all these really nice things. So there are worse things that you have to smell on your, you know, as you're walking through Well, it's actually probably uh, doing a service to the people of Melbourne, I mean. Yeah, uh, people stink. <laughs> so if I, like, if I have to secondhand smoke anything in, I'd much rather it be, you know, some mango, frango, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the, the worst... Part of it is is that it's clearly and openly the reasoning is that it's a, a signalling exercise. They're saying, well, mm. you know, if people are vaping in public, it might send the message that vaping is okay. Vaping is okay. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's helped a lot of people get off smoking. Yeah, it's, a lot of people get off smoking and it, it, it's a better... But, but I mean, well, we're not... We're not this, is the, this is the... And this is the point about tobacco advertising, about alcohol advertising, about fast food advertising. I and mean, the government is not our parent. It's not... It can help mitigate the health costs of certain externalities, but... For it to say, well, we don't want people sending the wrong message. You know, I, I'm 32 years old. 
I might yeah. not act like it, but I'm an adult and I'm capable of taking my own decision. I don't see some bloke vaping in the middle of the Burke Street Mall and think, oh, that looks brilliant. That looks I, cool. I better do it I'm going to go out and away. vape. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, take that exactly. Up. If people know the facts, they can make up their own minds, yep. especially vaping, which isn't help, hurting anyone else. So yep, yep. So leave it alone. So Councillor Nicholas Reese, who I see from time to time, the blood will be on your hands. Stop this madness. Stop it immediately. And for anybody interested, follow on Twitter great uh, people like Colin Mendelson and Dr. Joe uh, Kostrovich. Uh, if that's how you pronounce his name, and it probably isn't, so apologies, Dr. Joe. But they are they are the dissident doctors. They're the heretics of they're like the, the, the climate change realists of the of the big public health world, and they do a very very good job at uh, speaking truth to power. So all the power to them. Well, there you go. Well, let's talk about some things that made us laugh this week. Yep. Now, yep. there's not a lot. I mean, it's pretty, you know, it's grim times. Pretty grim times. There's not a lot of news. They told me not, I had to be upbeat for this show. So, no, one's, uh, like, no one's out in the street doing anything. Everyone's at home. So like, nothing really that funny has been happening. But there are a few things that made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, and the first one was the amount of people that didn't realise uh, about the coronavirus. First one is Jared Leto, and he was in silent meditation for 12 days. If, you, and if you're watching this on YouTube, he looks like he's been on some sort of silent... He looks like he'd been living in a commune with Kool-Aid and uh, a thousand Yeah, followers. he looks like the kind of guy that was in silent meditation for 12 days. Yeah. And if you know about him, you know, this isn't unlike him. Anyway, so he came out and didn't know anything about... Because it, it re, it's really ramped up, you know, over the last couple of weeks. So mm. he had no idea about the extremes. But mm. even more funny, I think... The Big Brother contestants <laughs> they were filming had no idea about coronavirus, and they were just living in um, peaceful ignorance. Yeah, and they, they told them. They eventually they did have to tell them. Yeah. Um, but if I was, I was thinking, you know, if I was in there, if I was filming, I don't know if I'd believe them. If you know, if someone told me, oh, everyone out there, you know, it's, the world's gone crazy. Well, they showed them. Out. They showed them crying and stuff on the news. But I think what happened was they actually showed they had. Um, vision of like each family had a recorded message so i think it was crying from seeing their family they hadn't seen for a while but frankly if if i was in the big brother house uh on the gold coast or wherever it is these days and they told me about the covid uh i'd think oh, half my luck i'm in i'm in yeah, isolation correct. compound that's, with other people as well they absolutely nailed it and you know good on them because that's the best social isolation you can do so they're doing their part yeah um unlike some of the other some of the rest of us correct so. i'd rather be you know with 19 other drunks than with by myself in, in isolation so it's sort of quarantine in advance yeah i'm gonna sign up for the next big brother <laughs> that big sounds brother. awesome yeah i'm They've sure got the life i'm sure your political views will go down well they're with not your getting mates. any diseases and they also don't have to do anything so and you could win what is it a half a million bucks quarter of a million bucks you could but yeah, have to be in it to win it. Remains maybe, to be seen. Maybe that's something we should do in the IPA. Have an IPA version of Big Brother. We just sort of isolate ourselves for a while as our next podcast and just hilarity. That'd be a lot of. I think it'd be a much angrier pod, like a Big <laughs> Brother. It'd be a lot of ranting. A lot of. Well, a lot of people don't understand this about us, but we do have um, a lot of variation in opinion at this place. Mm. We do have a lot of internal debates around the water cooler. So, yeah, all of us locked together in the same house, you know, the, you'd have the Very conservatives versus people. the libertarians like me and everything yeah. else. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of opinionated people here, which is surprise, good, surprise. which we love, yeah. but that can clash and I think that could end up uh, a little tense. Yeah. Anyway, so another thing that made, something that made me laugh this week is um, people who are profiteering or cashing in on this, as, as always happens in times of war or war-like conditions this one bloke in the u.s bought seventeen thousand bottles of hand sanitizer wow and in the hope of flogging them <laughs> on ebay or no sorry on amazon so he collected all his hand sanitizer and they for like one dollar a bottle he wanted to sell, sell it for twenty dollars a bottle a bit, and that's a bit you know oh, bit it, 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 look it, it's it's some people fight so you know the the lefties might still say, oh, but you people should be in favour of that. You're capitalists. And no, just because it's legal to do something and you can do something doesn't mean you should. You should not yeah. profit off human misery and stink people 19 additional dollars for hand sanitizer. But anyway, I digress. Um, this bloke was planning on selling on Amazon and lo and behold, Amazon, to their credit, I might add, said that we will not stand for profiteering mm -hmm. and, and again, profiting off human misery on our platform. So this bloke is now not permitted to sell anything. He's, yeah, and he's got 17,000 bottles. So if you, need, if you need a bottle and you're in America, feel free to pop into his house. Yeah. What um, made me laugh about it as well is when you read about what he said about it is he's claiming he was doing, you know, a public service <laughs> in going and getting it and, and giving it to everyone. Not for free, by the way. So 
I like that he has somehow twisted this. He's just an intermediary. He's the victim here. He was doing a public service. Yeah. And he's not the only one. Yeah. Um, so this other this yeah the, well this is a this is a much better story and I I I'm mean, in favor of this this is because you know it's it's a slightly different story but this kid got a bottle got his hands on a bottle of hand sanitizer and went it around at school in the UK charging fifty pence per squirt and uh and he raised about seven dollars by the end of the day but he he got sent home and his mother said look it was difficult to to punish him because his father called him from work and said, quote, that he was an effing legend, <laughs> so, which is absolutely true. He is level. That, that's the kind of profiteering I can get around. That's sort of a cute little uh, little story. But You um, know, my problem is, though, you know we're living in dire times when other kids at school are willing to pay for hand sanitizer. Yeah, correct. Firstly, I'm pretty sure, th- don't schools have it in bathrooms? And secondly, go spend that at the tuck shop. Yeah. Go, Get get an icy pile or something. Yeah, Do something correct. more fun. Well, kids are, are are primed and trained to think in doom and gloom predictions. I mean, these are the kids who are encouraged to piss off from school and go and strike exactly. the climate. So uh, I guess we have hardwired into children a sense of apocalypticism. So uh, you know, kids are no fun. Take <laughs> it's no fun. Well, you know who is fun? Our oh, next yeah, story. Speaking of fun, yeah. yeah so, uh in LA, so most things nowadays, you know, in the wake of coronavirus are shutting down. Yeah. Schools are shutting down, you know, most, you know, sporting clubs, social things are, you know, coming to a halt. But uh, one organisation in LA that organises orgies, <laughs> uh, they have said that they will be going ahead. Um, Hashtag love wins. Despite, despite coronavirus. The funniest thing for me in this is they have said that at these uh, parties, they will have extra soap and hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we should get into the nitty gritty of it, but like, I don't think hand sanitizer and soap is going to do that much to prevent the spread of coronavirus at these events. Well, the funniest thing about stories like this is, and I've realized this the other day, we are seeing so many doctors on TV and doctors have a particular style about them. They tend to be, it's not that they're bad people, they're they're, they're lovely people for the most part, but they, they have a certain air of pompousness about them this sort of very bookish nerdy mm-hmm. um you know i spent six years and then i had to specialize so you know i know what i'm talking about so my favorite is the bloke who what's his name uh his name is dr muhammad munir of lancaster university's department of Bio- biomedical and life sciences and he explains that in the in the very doctor tone um uh, where is it where is it where is it i have to fix this in post uh, dating has a high risk of transmission, Muna says, because you tend to have more prolonged contact with the other person. You may kiss them, hug them, or hold their hand for a couple of hours. The longer the duration you have contact with somebody, the greater the risk of transmission. Uh, well, I guess well, that's, that's true. You also know things. that that bloke has never gone to one of these parties. <laughs> he's got no idea. He's never been invited, and he's probably a bit salty about it. So. Yeah, correct, correct. Well, uh, as I said, I, you know, love wins, I suppose, but uh, I, I guess... I am. I, I haven't been to one of these parties before. I should. I should point out, and that's not my particular lifestyle. But I am a a a a Milton headness at the best of times, and I'll be the first to say no. Let these parties go ahead. But with the keenness of reluctance, I am willing to concede that at times like this, when we do have to self isolate, you probably shouldn't be going and having sex with a few, with many many different people in the same room. That is not a particularly sensible thing to do. Yeah, and you know, if we have to shut down, like. How has have schools come to shutting down before this? Like, if we're if we're ranking things in how necessary they are, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to say I think things like school might come above it. It's, but it's not like perverts get shunted off to grandparents or all those other risks for shutting down a school. So yeah, uh, yeah, no, love well, is love, but uh, love in the age of coronavirus, that's uh, not not uh, not particularly. Uh, prescient or sensible so uh, what's next oh we got a story about uh the uh, q and a q and a did have us an audience um because of this there was a concern that the audience of quanda would be too close together so they let 16 people into the studio to ask questions i mean there's not much to say about this story other than i think that's you know 16 people in the audience is basically on par with the relevance that q and a has to the majority of the australian population i agree that's a good representation of how many people actually think Q&A is worth watching. Matters or is important. Um, but secondly, I actually think that would be a good innovation. In fact, I might watch Q&A now because the worst part of it is, well, they, firstly, they got rid of Tony Jones, who was annoying, uh, and the new bloke seems a little bit better. But they, they, also the other thing about Q&A is the obnoxious clapping after every point some uneducated lefty, lefty makes. Over, you know, 
I just think we should we should do something about climate change before it's too late. Yeah, huge clap. You know, it's just it's a pantomime for trots. So mm-hmm. yeah, no. So it, it's uh, Corona as tragic and as terrible as it is, it's it's forcing a lot of innovation, uh, deregulations we talked about, or pairing back the more annoying elements of Q and A. I'm all for it. Well, thanks for that one, Corona. <laughs> Not all the rest, and I think that probably wraps us up for this show. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check it out on all the podcast platforms. Uh, yep. We probably won't be back next week. You'll probably be with Pete and Bolt. So I've, I've had fun. It's been fun. Yeah. We'll, we'll, you know, get them out some other time. We'll, we'll no, sneak back in. We'll, we'll, we'll they should stay in quarantine for another week. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll get them sick. All right. Thanks. <laughs> See you later. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>